Lockheed Martin just reported catastrophic second quarter losses of $1.6 billion, their worst financial hit in years. The defense giant missed out on crucial Air Force and Navy contracts while competitors swooped in on lucrative deals. But here's what Wall Street doesn't know. Buried deep in those earnings reports is a $950 million loss on a classified aeronautics program that CEO Jim Teichlet calls game-changing. That secret program? It's likely the SR-72, a hypersonic reconnaissance aircraft that would scream through the sky at Mach 6, over 4,600 miles per hour. This isn't just another fighter jet. This is America's answer to the hypersonic arms race, and it's been hiding in plain sight for nearly two decades. Imagine flying from New York to Moscow in 90 minutes, not in some distant sci-fi future, but potentially by the end of this decade. The SR-72, nicknamed the Son of Blackbird, represents the most ambitious leap in aerospace technology since the Apollo program. We're talking about an unmanned aircraft that operates at speeds where the air itself becomes plasma, where traditional materials would melt like butter, and where the rules of aerodynamics get completely rewritten. Today, we're pulling back the curtain on one of America's most classified aerospace programs. We'll explore how Lockheed Martin Skunk Works has been secretly developing this hypersonic marvel since 2006. Why the program suddenly went dark after Russia's hypersonic weapons announcement in 2018, and how massive cost overruns totaling billions of dollars, might actually signal that this revolutionary aircraft is closer to reality than anyone expected. But this story isn't just about speed records or fancy technology. It's about maintaining American air superiority in an era where satellites have predictable orbits, stealth can be defeated, and our adversaries are fielding hypersonic weapons of their own. The SR-72 could be the ace up America's sleeve, if they can actually make it work. The beating heart of the SR-72 is something called a turbine-based combined cycle engine, or TBCC. Now, before your eyes glaze over at the technical jargon, let me explain this in terms everyone can understand. Think of it as two engines wrapped into one sleek package, like having both a reliable family sedan engine and a rocket ship engine that can switch back and forth depending on what you need. Here's the brilliant part. At takeoff and landing, the SR-72 uses a conventional turbofan engine, the same type that powers your typical commercial airliner. This gets the aircraft up to around Mach 2.5, which is already faster than an F-22 Raptor at full throttle. But then something magical happens. At Mach 3, the scramjet kicks in. Now, a scramjet, that's supersonic combustion ramjet for the acronym lovers, is essentially an engine with no moving parts that literally rides the shockwave of its own speed. The incoming air gets compressed by the aircraft's forward motion alone. Fuel gets injected, and boom, you've got thrust without any turbines or compressors. It's like surfing on explosions. But here's the insane engineering challenge. At Mach 6, the aircraft's skin temperature reaches over 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hot enough to melt aluminum like ice cream on a summer day. NASA awarded contracts worth nearly $2 million, combined to Lockheed Martin and Aerojet Rocketdyne, just to study if this propulsion system was even possible. The beauty of this dual engine system is that it solves a problem that's plagued hypersonic flight for decades. See, turbojets work great from zero to about Mach 2.2, Ramjets take over from Mach 3 to 5, but scramjets, they only work above Mach 5. The SR-72's TBCC engine bridges all these gaps seamlessly. At least, that's the theory. Making it work in practice? Well, that's why Lockheed's been burning through billions of dollars. And that brings us to the billion-dollar question. If this is so hard, why has Lockheed been working on it in secret for almost 20 years? To understand the SR-72, you need to know about its legendary predecessor. The SR-71 Blackbird was the ultimate Cold War flex, a reconnaissance aircraft that could outrun missiles simply by pushing the throttle forward. From 1964 to 1998, it flew at Mach 3.2, snapping photos of Soviet installations while surface-to-air missiles fell hopelessly behind. Not a single Blackbird was ever shot down by enemy fire. But in 1998, the Air Force retired the Blackbird, claiming satellites could do the job cheaper. Big mistake. Satellites have predictable orbits. Enemies know exactly when they're overhead and can hide the good stuff. Plus, when you need immediate reconnaissance over a crisis zone, you can't just redirect a satellite like calling an Uber. So in 2006, Lockheed Martin Skunk Works started working on something even more ambitious. The first whispers emerged in 2007. Anonymous sources talking about an aircraft capable of Mach 6, 
Then, in November 2013, Aviation Week broke the story wide open. Lockheed Martin was developing the SR-72. The plan was audacious. Build a single-engine demonstrator by 2018, about the size of an F-22. Test the TBCC propulsion system, prove the concept, then scale up to a full-size twin-engine operational platform by 2030. Lockheed executives were surprisingly open about it, unusual for a classified program. And here's where things get really interesting. In 2017, multiple eyewitnesses near Lockheed's Palmdale facility reported seeing an unusual aircraft that didn't match any known profiles. By February 2018, Orlando Carvalho, Lockheed's executive VP of Aeronautics, let slip that hypersonic demonstrators were already being tested. Eventually, as that technology is matured, he said, it could ultimately enable the development of a reusable vehicle. Then came the game changer. In March 2018, Vladimir Putin announced Russia's new hypersonic weapons arsenal, the Kinjal, the Avangard, weapons that could allegedly penetrate any defense system. Within weeks, something bizarre happened. Lockheed Martin completely scrubbed all SR-72 references from their website. The program went dark, black budget dark. Since then, the only hints have come from SEC filings and financial reports. Massive cost overruns in classified aeronautics programs, budget allocations that don't match known projects. A new 648 building at Palmdale equipped for advanced manufacturing. Lockheed's Skunk Works workforce more than doubling from 2,500 to 5,500 employees. Something big is happening behind those hangar doors. But what exactly has this phantom aircraft been doing? Picture this scenario. Tensions are escalating in the South China Sea. China has deployed their latest HQ-19 surface-to-air missile systems on artificial islands, creating an anti-access bubble that conventional aircraft can't penetrate. Satellites show military buildup, but their predictable orbits mean you're only getting snapshots every few hours. You need real-time intelligence. You need it now. Enter the SR-72. Launching from a classified base, possibly Area 51 or Plant 42 in Palmdale, it climbs to 80,000 feet, well above commercial air traffic. The turbofan engines push it past Mach 2, then the scramjet ignites. Within minutes, it's traveling at Mach 6, crossing the Pacific in less than two hours. At hypersonic speeds, the SR-72 doesn't need stealth in the traditional sense. By the time enemy radars detect it and calculate a firing solution, it's already 50 miles away. The aircraft's sensors, specially designed to operate through the plasma field that forms around hypersonic vehicles, capture everything. Troop movements, missile deployments, communication signals. But here's the kicker. Unlike the SR-71, which was purely a reconnaissance platform, the SR-72 might pack a punch. Lockheed has been developing something called the High Speed Strike Weapon, or HSSW. Imagine dropping a precision munition from Mach 6 at 80,000 feet. The kinetic energy alone would be devastating. No explosives needed. It would be like dropping telephone poles from space. Or consider the Middle East, where Lockheed's Jim Tyklet specifically mentioned their systems are performing extremely well in combat operations. An SR-72 could provide real-time battlefield intelligence over Syria or Yemen, tracking terrorist movements across vast deserts where satellite coverage has gaps. The 90-minute response time from CONUS to anywhere in the Middle East means commanders could have eyes on target before their morning coffee gets cold. Now imagine a European contingency. Russia's S-500 air defense systems are supposedly capable of intercepting hypersonic targets. But the SR-72 wouldn't just rely on speed, it would use altitude, electronic warfare, and unpredictable flight paths. At Mach 6, it could photograph Moscow's military installations and be over the Atlantic before anyone in the Kremlin finishes saying Blyatt. Of course, all these capabilities assume the SR-72 actually works as advertised. And that brings us to the elephant in the room, or should I say the billion-dollar elephant in the hangar, because this program is hemorrhaging money faster than a Vegas casino on New Year's Eve. Let's talk money. Serious money. In just the second quarter of 2025, Lockheed reported a $950 million loss on a classified aeronautics program. Since 2022, Total losses have exceeded $1.8 billion in contractor penalties alone. And here's the thing about defense contracts. When contractors eat penalties, it usually means the actual cost overruns are five to six times higher. We could be looking at $11 billion in budget overages. Why so expensive? Well, imagine trying to build a paper airplane that won't burn up when you throw it through a blowtorch. Now make that airplane fly at Mach 6. 
The SR72 faces what engineers call continued design, integration, and test challenges. Corporate speak for, this is way harder than we thought. The thermal management alone is a nightmare. At hypersonic speeds, the aircraft's leading edges experience temperatures that would melt most known materials. Lockheed has had to develop entirely new composites, drawing on their experience from DARPA's HTV2 program, which, fun fact, basically melted during its test flights. Then there's the engine problem. Remember that fancy TBCC system? Transitioning from turbofan to scramjet while flying is like changing your car's engine while driving at 200 miles per hour. Test flights have reportedly experienced what sources delicately call mode transition anomalies. Engineers speak for, sometimes the engine just stops working at Mach 4. The political challenges are just as daunting. Every billion dollars spent on the SR-72 is a billion not spent on F-35s, next-gen bombers, or hypersonic missiles. Critics argue that unmanned hypersonic missiles could do the same job cheaper. Some Air Force generals initially preferred the Northrop Grumman RQ-180 stealth drone, considering it less complex and risky. And Lockheed isn't alone in this race. Hermes is developing the Quarter Horse and Dark Horse hypersonic aircraft. Stratolaunch is working on the Talon A. The Air Force awarded Leidos $334 million for their Mayhem program, though that was mysteriously wound down citing insufficient operational demand, possibly because the SR-72 was already sucking up all the black budget oxygen. Meanwhile, China claims their hypersonic weapons are operational. Russia's been flying the Kinzhal since 2018. The hypersonic race isn't coming, it's here, and America might be playing catch up with a program that's billions over budget and years behind schedule. But here's the plot twist. Despite all these problems, all these billions in overruns, all these technical nightmares, the SR-72 program hasn't been canceled. In fact, it seems to be accelerating. So where does this leave us? Let's connect the dots. Lockheed Martin is hemorrhaging money on a classified aeronautics program that just happens to match the SR-72's profile perfectly. They've built new facilities, doubled their workforce, and gone completely silent about a program they once discussed openly. Test flights have reportedly occurred. Remember those Palmdale sightings in 2017? Lockheed executives confirmed in 2018 that demonstrators were flying. The smart money says the SR-72 is real, it's flying, and it's probably a lot closer to operational status than anyone's admitting. The 2030 service entry date that Lockheed projected back in 2018? Still on track despite the cost overruns. In fact, those overruns might actually indicate progress. You don't lose billions on vaporware. You lose billions when you're bending the laws of physics to make something extraordinary work. Think about what this means strategically. While China and Russia have been developing hypersonic missiles, essentially one-way tickets, America's been building a reusable hypersonic platform. It's the difference between having arrows and having a bow that shoots arrows. The SR-72 wouldn't just be a reconnaissance aircraft, it would be a hypersonic Swiss army knife, ISR today, strike tomorrow, electronic warfare the day after. This could fundamentally change the calculus of modern warfare. Imagine conflicts where critical intelligence arrives in hours, not days, where strategic targets can be struck before enemy leadership finishes their morning briefing, where the mere existence of such a capability forces adversaries to constantly assume they're being watched. The SR-72 isn't just an aircraft, it's a strategic deterrent with wings. Right now, somewhere in the California desert, behind classified doors and billion-dollar budgets, America's next superweapon is learning to fly. The defense establishment won't confirm it. The contractors can't talk about it, but the money doesn't lie. 1.8 billion in penalties, 11 billion in probable overruns, decades of development. You don't spend that kind of money on something that doesn't work. You spend it on something that changes everything. Here's my question for you. If the SR-72 becomes operational by 2030, making traditional air defenses obsolete, how do you think China and Russia will respond? Will we see a new arms race in hypersonic interceptors? Or will this force everyone back to the negotiating table? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe for more deep dives into classified military programs that are hiding in plain sight. Because mark my words, when this bird finally breaks cover, when the Pentagon finally admits what they've been building in those desert hangars, it won't just break the sound barrier, it'll break every rule of aerial warfare we thought we knew.